Anyway, when I got to the lab, John Fisher told me about tunneling. But since I was unf unfamiliar with quantum mechanics, I didn't believe a word of what he told me. Nothing, you know, but I got a job and I had to say I had to be polite to this person and you, <laughs> you know, you got to, you can't, so. Anyway, this is what he told me. And uh, here's the guy there throwing a tennis ball against a wall or a fence or something. And you well know that a tennis ball will bounce back. But if you continue throwing the tennis ball against the wall, John Fisher told me, the ball sooner or rather later will appear on the other side of the wall. And there will be no hole in the wall and the tennis ball look exactly like it did. That's quantum mechanical tunneling. And I see that you don't believe it and I didn't either. <laughs> So, but the point is that if you take a very small ball, and the smallest balls we know about are electrons. Those are the ones who carry current in a metal. And therefore, if I take two metals and put them close together, but, but out touching, there is a finite chance that these balls can go from one metal to the other without ever being in between. That's the marvelous thing about quantum mechanics, you know, they never, they just, you know, there. So, I, when John told me that, I didn't believe it, and, and I said, so, but that's okay. I was out of jobs, so I was happy. And then, when what, what we did that, then you have to find out some way of separating the two metal pieces. You can't really, you can't be a centimeter apart, they have to be a few atom distance apart. And we tried very different kind of experiments, and they all failed. And John used to call them miracles. The reason he called my experiment miracles is he said miracles only happens once. And my experiment could never be repeated. So that, you know, they were miracles. So, and of course, in science, you can't publish miracles. So you've got to do something else. And so this is how then we, when we finally succeeded in doing this, this is how we made the samples. And if there are any budding scientists here, if you want to do great science, then you can't buy a big machine and then do the science, you know, with that, because a lot of other people have the big machine. If you go to great science, you have to invent the way you do things yourself. Then you have a chance of doing great science. Now here is an evaporator, that means you have vacuum in here, and so this is how we made the tunneling samples. In here you have a tantalum boat, you pass a current in here, and you heat up that tantalum boat and the current goes out there. So now this gets hot. In that tantalum boat, you have a pellet, you have a little bit of aluminum. And aluminum will melt. And when aluminum melts, then you start evaporating and it will condense on the microscope we have up here. So the middle, this is just like if you heat up water, water will, of course water is for heat up ice, say ice would melt, you get water, you heat it more, it will evaporate. And if you look under the lid when you boil something, you see there water there, it condenses. And this is exactly the same as aluminum condenses up here. And so then what we had then is a strip of aluminum along a glass slide. Then we wait for a little while out in air and the aluminum will oxidize. That means you get a thin layer of insulating on here and then you put it back in evaporate cross strips. So what you have made now is this circuit here. You have two pieces of aluminum separated by an aluminum oxide. If you hook it up to a battery, you expect the current to flow and stop here and charge up this thing. But if this layer is very thin, you actually get a current flowing here. And this is a tunneling current. And so it's one of these miracles, you know, which uh, happened. 